Hey, what's up? Leron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. Now, if you're on this watercolor journey or just painting or art journey in general, you know how challenging it can be and how sometimes it can feel like maybe you're not making enough progress or there are lessons and mistakes, lessons you don't learn, mistakes you keep doing, recurring stuff. Now, in this video, I want to kind of address some of these. What I'm going to do is share some of my recent works with you and we'll try together to talk about how I feel about them, the things I want to work on, the things I want to improve um, and perhaps maybe we'll gain some new insights from it. Maybe you'll learn something new about your work. So let me actually start from big to small. And this is probably one of the largest paintings that I've recently made uh, and you can barely see it all together, but I believe I do show it in a different video. So uh, it's a scene from New York from Fifth Avenue. Uh, one of the paintings I put the most effort into uh, recently and hopefully you can hear me well and hopefully you can see well I'm um, using my regular camera rather than my phone for this one uh, usually I film these videos face to face with my phone but in any case uh, one of the main things I would say here that I'm proud of is how I didn't overwork a lot of the larger areas I came mentally prepared to tackle large areas um, with mixing enough water in advance mixing enough paint in advance to ensure that I don't get to a position where I have to keep mixing simultaneously because look at these huge washes, okay? And this is the challenge with big paintings. I always say you have to be able to know how much to mix and mix a lot of it well in advance. By the way, I'll try cropping in pictures of the paintings just for better quality as I'm speaking and hopefully that will help as well. So uh, one of the things I have uh, been really proud of again is not overworking. Now another thing that I think works really well here is temperature. Now this is something I have been struggling with, you'll see soon. Uh, the idea of nailing the temperature in a way that pleases the eye for the viewer and gets the viewer to really enjoy the painting. So the temperature here is something I'm very proud of but I very often mess it up and it just feels all over the place. Now if you look at this one there is some kind of a, an organized way of tackling it. There is some hierarchy if you will. You get these very warm colors in the middle uh, and they convey a lot of the sunlight. Look at these strong saturated colors here and then as you go into the peripheries of the painting you get the more blues and more purples and look at this corner it's really starkingly bluer than the rest um, and I think this dynamic works really well with some scenes I know how to do that usually with cityscapes with others not so much and I sometimes tend to mess it up uh, which is why this is something I really want to work on so temperatures is one thing overall does it work in the entire painting as a whole okay now let's look at another painting now you probably have seen um, this one I did uh, of this uh, Jeep or Chevrolet some kind of a vehicle I don't know exactly the model um, but this was based on a picture I took okay um, and I really love the light and shadow conditions now here this is another one where I can say I'm very proud of the color harmony. Um, I think it works extremely well in this example. The balance between the lights and the shadows is really nice. What happens is uh, I was able to get some interest in the shadows in the form of a bit of red here, a bit of blue, but overall the, the main trend here is the lighter washes are a little more saturated, also warmer obviously, and the darker ones are a little more um, muted and neutral and gray. Now look at this, all of these buildings in the background. Whenever someone wonders how can I simplify <laughs> such things like buildings and all sorts of details, here's one way to turn them into one shape, one big shape. I think that's a huge lesson to be learned here. One more element in this painting that I'm extra proud of is look at this reflected light bit here. Reflected light is actually really important. Um, very often by ignoring it you'll mess up uh, a lot of the things that feel natural and beautiful about a scene. So it's just another thing to uh, be aware of. Sorry I'm struggling to show you the whole thing simultaneously but in any case it's just another thing to be aware of. I think there's a good balance in detail. This is something I usually don't struggle with. I feel like I strike a good balance of the details um, in relation to the size of the painting. In the past I would either get too crammed or too barren and empty. This is a good, I think, balance. Now let's talk about edges. Edges are very important in watercolor. If everything is a hard edge, it gets boring and it gets repetitive. Look at the tires here. Look at how all of this blends straight into this shadow. This is a very important key concept here that you want to pay attention to. If you can merge these things together, if you can 
put them together in, in such a way that this is, entire thing flows as one individual shape. That's really, really good. Okay, now enough with this one. Let's move on to the next one. I think you'll love this. This is new. Okay, so <laughs> a scene I painted from our living room. I took a picture of it. I actually just finished it yesterday. Uh, and May and Ruth here together with me. Uh, I was just chilling on the sofa and I love the angle and the light coming from behind. Let me show it to you up close. I'll also put again pictures. Um, but what I really loved about it is just the angle. It was fun and I had Ruth next to me with her toy. It's a disgusting toy. She keeps chewing it. It's full of her... <laughs> so in any case, let me show it to you all together. Now the challenge here for me was um, the light and shadow conditions because I had three pictures. One, this part was completely burnt in terms of too much light. The second, and, and you could barely see anything here, it was too dark. Every photo had a different area showing and I had to merge them together in Photoshop and get the ideal combination of light and shadow. Um, but I think eventually I got it to work uh, in terms of the values, okay? So dark versus light, all of this works. Hopefully Ruth looks like herself. She's, she's the bestest, I'm telling you. Um, but here's where I feel like I may have messed it up a bit. Look at the temperature. It's kind of all over the place. What happens is you get generally a sense of warmth up top, then it goes into very strong blues. Now, if the painting would end here, it would have been perfect. You see, it's just that warm and cool and it works well. But then as you move downwards, we have again warm and then we have again cool. Because I haven't created an initial wash with one color or maybe two, to unite everything together, the temperature is kind of all over the place. Look at my leg. It's a very strong, warm red and then blue. It's just a big mess. Now, that's fine. It's not necessarily a bad thing. It depends uh, on your personal taste. I do think there is something to be said about proper color harmony and getting everything to work um, in, a, in a larger scale when you look at it zoomed out. Okay, okay again, this is arguable. Um, very often, People won't even think about it. They'll just look at it and say, I love what I see, or they don't love what they see. But my personal taste, and this is why I love works by Alvaro Castanet so much. He goes very colorful and saturated at times, especially with reds, as you know, sometimes blues, sometimes even greens. But there is always a good balance of temperature throughout the entire painting, which is huge. Uh, so another thing to work on, I suppose, hopefully you like this one. This is obviously has a personal importance for me. I wanted to work on something more personal and more uh, representative of my own life and not just another cityscape or another seascape or another still. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Well, let's move on to some other ones, again, going smaller. Uh, so what we have here is, I have four of them. We're gonna go rather quickly. I don't want this video to be too long. Now, this one I posted on many different places, uh, Instagram and here, and, and it's very similar to a recent video I did, actually. Now here, just the composition doesn't feel interesting enough for me. There isn't a lot of interest going on here. Something needs to cut through this very dry, straight kind of um, light area. Um, but the values overall are nice. The balance in shapes is good. Here I would argue, again, the temperature is kind of all over the place. Now let me contrast this with an example in which I think the temperature is perfect, uh, which is uh, this one that I'm very proud of. Probably one of my best works so far, to be honest with you. Uh, and I have posted this in multiple places. Um, this has a very clear sense of temperature, cool to warm. There is a bit of warmth, obviously, here, but, you know, uh, good balance of colors good balance of values, it's on point, everything works really well here, even the shimmer on the water surface, the details are in, in, in good, uh, kind of in check when you talk about, um, you know, the foreground having a bit more details, the background, a lot of it is abstracted, look at these boats in the farthest distance, they are really, really abstract. Okay, and I do want to do this video face to face rather than the table. I feel like it's more personal and more fun. Let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, let me show you another one. So this is Chef here. He's pretty famous internationally, Eyal Shani. Now, the thing he loves to make the most is he loves to use tomatoes. And so I, I said at the time I wanted to challenge myself with an interesting color harmony. So I said, why not go for the colors of a tomato, so red and green. And what I love about this, a very common uh, concept in color harmony is you get these um, very saturated, two colors opposing on the color wheel. You get red and you get green. 
one of them is saturated and the other is more muted. It can be either or, it doesn't matter. So in this example, the red is clearly very saturated. It's a strong, strong pyrrole scarlet. While the green is a combination of undersea green, which is very muted, and maybe a bit of sap green around here. You see it's a bit stronger. And this is a very common go-to type of color harmony that you see often. You can reverse this and have a very strong um, saturated green more similar to a phthalo green, something like that, and then a muted red, um, perhaps a, a brownish kind of color. And these are a very common way of approaching this and creating an interesting color harmony. You can get the same thing with um, yellow and purple. It works in so many different ways. Uh, but here I think it's good. I think the values are on point. I think I simplify the face. Obviously a portrait is very difficult uh, to paint, but I think this one works very well. Also a variety of edges. Here it kind of all blends together. But then as you go up, a bit more sharpness, harshness, um, um, dry brush here uh, on the hair. So I do think this one is a good balance of everything together. Now the colors can be a little garish and you may hate them. That's fine, a personal choice. Now here's the one, I don't wanna talk a lot about this, but because I did show how I painted in a recent video, uh, I don't think it was the last one I posted, but in any case, very good um, in all regards, except the one thing I talked about last time, just this car, you know, sticks out like a sore thumb because it's too blue for me. This entire area, look at it like that. It's kind of warm, it's kind of balanced, and then bam, it's blue. And then it goes back to warm, and then blue again. So I feel like this could have been executed better. Again, this is the challenge of, um, while you're doing all of the details and all of the stages, the challenge is to keep track of the entire thing. Okay, and this is something I do want to work on. How does the painting work not only in this small section, not only in this larger section, but everything together? How does this area relate to that area, top to bottom, whatever? You know, in terms of details, harmony, values, all, the whole thing. Um, and in terms of values, it actually works really well here, I think. Look at this, it's very clear. This, the floor is lighter. This here is a little darker. The cars are very, are very prominent and very clear. So you see, you can judge the painting based on a multitude of aspects. And depending on what you go, you will uh, get a different impression of it. Now, let me show you something. When I wanted to remedy the overworking <laughs> aspect of things, I did this one. It's a beautiful picture I took here in Tel Aviv, just the car and a wall behind it. And the key for me here was to merge them all together. There's also a person, a very robotic looking person, but the key for me here was to make sure that um, this area is merged into the car. So you get a, essentially one wash and then maybe a couple of details injected in it. Uh, when I'm doing these experiments, I'm trying to keep things simple for myself. So this is also pretty much uh, monochromatic, kind of blue. Uh, I don't overcomplicate other aspects when I work on one specific aspect. Sorry, I think I have an important phone call. Just wanted to make sure it's not that, yeah. So um, you get it. It's just an experiment on a very specific uh, nuance of the creation process, which is, I think, important to do from time to time. Now, let me show you this one, and you may have seen it on Instagram. Here I had this kind of a breakthrough of focusing yet again on large shapes and then doing a lot of wet and wet in them. So what I wanted to achieve here, sorry that I'm lo not looking at you, I'm looking at the viewfinder to see that, make sure you see everything, but now I'm gonna look at you. Um, and what I wanted to achieve here is minimalism in how I approach the washes. So a big shape and then wet and wet within it. And to make sure to keep it to the minimum keep the shadows clean and not overworked. And you see here a lot of wet and wets. See these, all of these shapes here? A lot of wet and wets that I think do a lot of good to this painting and keep it simple and balanced for the viewer. Here's another quick one. Showed you how I painted it here on YouTube. Look at it up close, very abstract, barely any details. Now look at it from afar. You can almost think this is a, a photo, you know? Uh, so this is one of the things I love doing the most. This is a perfect piece in my opinion. I wouldn't have changed anything about it. Not a thing, not a single thing here. Look at the temperature, it's beautiful. Often you'll find that a painting you are just kind of working on spontaneously and, and it just works out, it just ends up working, while the ones you put a lot of thought and effort into sometimes can go wrong, quote unquote. Now, lastly, I am doing a challenge, the 100 cars challenge, in which I challenge myself to paint 100 cars in a very loose impressionistic style. So I wanna show you what I've got so far, I have five. Not a lot, but I want to show you. This is the first one I did. 
uh, just based on a picture I took here on, uh, in the street next uh, to ours. Um, I'm happy with it, a bit overworked, but the impression is really good, the values are on point. Um, the red isn't strong enough for my taste, but you know, you can't have it all, I guess. Now, the next one I did is this one. Very messy, it was supposed to be against the light. Now, I will say this, again, try and find something you love about every painting you, you have and you've made. So one of the things I will definitely uh, very easily love about this one is the temperatures. Red, yellow, showing the pure colors, and then the cooler blue overall tone of the painting, okay? So it's one of those things where, and the BMW sign is really nice, I think, it turned out really nice. Um, so it's just another one of those things where you nail one aspect, maybe the rest aren't perfect. By the way, look at the edges here. I think I did a really good job with those. Okay, so find something you love about the painting and, and give yourself a pat on the back for that. Here's another one, against the light. What I wanted to focus here is on, on again, just a variety of crazy colors, also against the light. Whether it makes sense or not, I don't know, but I love it. And I find it, I was expecting this challenge to go really easily because I really love cars and it ended up being harder and counterintuitive in many ways to what I'm used to. I don't know, when it's a single car, I tended to mess up a lot of it. Here's one that I think turned out, again, really well. Uh, took a bit of, and I don't know why the camera doesn't focus, here we go. Took a bit of effort to get all of the um, highlights in, make sure everything is in, to bring it back, which may give it a bit of a um, tacky look, I guess. Uh, but I do love it. I think this one turned out really nicely. And the last one, in which I think I got the best variety of edges, and uh, the colors are a little strange, to be honest with you. I think it could have been a little better. I lack, uh, it lacks a bit of red. I miss a bit of red here. But look at the edges of the tires here. I love the fact that it's a very, it lacks the clear distinction between this side and that side. Look at all of these sharp details here in the light, and then bam, a soft transition to the shadowy side of the car. Hopefully you can see this here and a very smooth transition into the tires So it just keeps things a little simpler again If you spell it out for the viewer if you show every small little detail It can backfire on you, which is why I recommend getting a good balance now Let me wrap this up by just talking a bit about what I want to improve the main things I want to work on I will say this first and foremost have having things work on a more um, wholesome manner if you zoom out of the painting does the value balance uh, work? Does the color harmony, does it make sense? You know, all of these things. And then also zooming in every part I want it to work. A couple of specific things, temperature. One of the key things that I find that I often mess up, it's just all over the place, it lacks clarity. Um, I wanna work on, um, I don't know exactly what to call this, but just the way I interpret the scene in terms of shapes to have it as simple as I can, but still look very realistic. Again, I love Alvaro Castaneda's work in that regard. It's very, and Joseph Zbokovic for that matter, and a lot of artists, it's very realistic. It has this sense of realism to it. It's not necessarily just the temperature and mood and the things that everyone talk about. It has that realistic quality to it. Um, and I think right now I've been feeling for about a month or so that I felt, I felt a bit stuck, which is funny with everyone stuck at home due to the lockdown and everything, people have blossomed artistically. For me, I felt a bit of a regression, but it's also because I was working on my manga and a lot of other things that took my attention from watercolor and forced me to um, uh, take a bit of a break in terms of working on my skills. So now I hope to be more back at it. Uh, also plein airs, couldn't do plein airs, which, um, also helped in, in, I think, reducing the freshness of my works. Uh, so I do hope to work on all of these things really soon and come back with better results for you and for myself. I'm trying to paint as selfishly as I can for my own enjoyment because I know that translates to more interesting artworks for you, more natural, more unique, more authentic artworks for you. I wanna really thank you for sticking around, for listening to this video, for watching it till the end. I really, really appreciate your time and I just couldn't have done it without you. So thank you so much. Let me know if you have any questions down below. I am answering to a lot of uh, comments lately, so hopefully I will. I do read well, pretty much all of them, I believe. So thank you so much, and I will see you again in the next vid real soon.